you, Dr. Ong. And next up, we'll have Dr. Neil Kaufman. So thank you very much. Really appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to speak, and it's an honor to do something with, with Paul Torrens' name uh, attached to it. Um, I have a long and, and strange career uh, as a clinician, as a physician, as a horizontalist in the vertical world of academic medicine, where I was not a specialist in any one particular thing, but was interested in many, many things. Uh, and I think that's what many of us in public health uh, are like. And 12 years ago, after a 27-year career in academic uh, primary care medicine and public health, uh, I decided to uh, set up a software development company. It's not something I knew anything about. Uh, I knew nothing about technology, but I did know what it takes to help people uh, to improve their health. Um, and I wanted to give you a sense of, of what we think about as important and, and where that's leading uh, within the technology uh, space. So the first uh, uh, issue is that individuals need to be empowered to self-management. By the way, I don't like the word empower because it implies that someone else is doing it to you. I wish I had a better word for it, but fundamentally, uh, individuals who have the ability to self-manage uh, and self-regulate, uh, and they understand the tasks that it takes to live well with one or more chronic condition, uh, are, are those who are going to be much, much healthier. To do that, uh, as you do that, you're able to prevent uh, chronic disease progression, uh, and it's not only the prevention of the chronic disease, but it's the prevention of adding additional chronic conditions, which is kind of like the natural history of individuals as we age. Every three to five years, if you have risk factors like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, obesity, prediabetes, take your pick, you add another one every three to five years, even if you don't become sick. So the question becomes, what can we do uh, as a public and, and personal health services system to lower that rate of adding new chronic conditions? all of which will lower cost. And if you do it right, you can lower cost within two or three years. One of the major challenges in public health and in population health is the long tail before you save money. So you've got to figure out a way to demonstrate an effective return on investment that occurs within a few years, because unfortunately, nobody cares about things beyond that. Just a little bit of editorial comment. <laughs> And if you think about uh, value-based care, which is where the, the country is going, uh, the increasing uh, expectation that more and more patients' care will be covered through a value-based payment structure rather than a fee-for-service or a volume-based, to me there's really four ways that you can uh, transform a system from, value, from volume to value. The first is to look at insurance design, and I am far from an expert on it, but think about the way that insurance can incentivize behaviors both on the provider side, uh, on the healthcare uh, system side, uh, and on the individual side. The second is the delivery system itself. Uh, how do you improve its efficiency, effectiveness? How do you give people more choice? How do you help them to uh, use the health system in a, in a better format? And there's lots of, change, uh, of, of changes and new approaches, whether it's primary care medical homes or, or other structures. The third is clinical management. Good old-fashioned doctor, nurse, healthcare professional uh, working with a patient. But that extends to disease management, care management, case management, whatever terms you want to use for it. And I look at care management, disease management, and the like as helping the individual follow the doctor's orders, taking your medicine appropriately, watching for side effects, understanding your disease, et cetera. The part that's missing, and, uh, and this is now a commentary, uh, which I think is valid, obviously, is self-management support. If you look at the, the causes of preventable mortality, we know that genetics and environment split the difference of about 20 to 30 percent each, about 10 percent is health care, and about 40 percent is behaviors. This is standard terms that public health people are, have been sprouting, have been talking about for, for years. And self-management support is the missing puzzle, piece of the puzzle to get to value-based care. So what we as a company did beginning 12 years ago is to really think about for adults who are at risk for or have one or more chronic conditions, what do you need to do to improve their outcomes? The first is you need to understand what are the behaviors they need to change. So they need to learn how to manage their lifestyle. All too often, diet, physical activity, fortunately smoking, I don't know if you saw it today, 15% of the American public smokes, it's the lowest it's ever been in the history of the United States. Uh, good news, but people have behaviors that need to change. Primarily diet and physical activity are the major ones. So they need to improve their lifestyle. 
the need to manage their stress. We know that stress is both un uncomfortable and not fun, but it's also biologically harmful and increases inflammatory markers uh, and increases cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and, and other conditions. So helping to manage your stress. The third is helping to manage your life with that chronic condition, being able to uh, make the choices that make you more likely uh, to be healthy. And the final is that if you are debilitated, if you have uh, cognitive impairment or serious uh, medical conditions, the caregiver in your life, often a loved one, is someone <clears throat> who needs to get support to be able to help them manage their, their lives. So we have put together a suite of services that cover each of those uh, areas. Uh, and I'll tell you briefly about a couple of them. But underlying that is a fundamental approach that individuals need to have a certain amount of education and knowledge. We know that knowledge is not sufficient, but it's necessary to change behavior. They need to have a sense of what they need to do to plan activities, uh, to be able to track their behaviors, to be able to see their progress. They need to have social support, both giving it and receiving that support. And they need to often get coaching or facilitation uh, from others. But what's really striking is they need to have the capacity to know that they need help and, and get to that help. So you need to activate them. You need to outreach to them. You need to get them interested in, in being involved in other programs. And then on the underlying that, you need analytics, the capacity to analyze individual performance, individual characteristics, to help better tailor those programs. So, I want to, so the way we do that is we identify healthcare providers, health plans who want to innovate with us. We co-create with them under their brand, under their approach, ways to improve uh, the services they provide to people, particularly adults with one or more chronic condition uh, who are looking at the self-management skills. So the first program, I'll tell you about two of them. Uh, one is a self-management support program out of Stanford. Uh, it's 12 years old in its, in, in its digital format. The first three or four years was done uh, as fundamental research to doc document that it could be effective. It's a six-week peer-to-peer support program where individuals come online, get a certain amount of content, uh, set action plans, and then converse with each other in a uh, bulletin board approach where threads of conversations uh, come. Highly effective, major impact on lowering your A1C if you have diabetes, lowering your depression if you have depression, lowering your pain, et cetera. The other is a digital version of the Diabetes Prevention Program created back in 2006, before other people knew that digital diabetes prevention programs could work. Uh, and it is a fundamental 16-week uh, uh, of lessons, uh, and, and eight, each one lesson every week, and eight monthly sessions. But again, fundamentally, it's education, goal setting, monitoring, tracking, uh, and feedback, with coaching provided by uh, skilled professionals. Both of those programs have been shown to be quite effective uh, able to lower cost uh, and to improve outcomes. I mention them as examples of the way you can take evidence-based programs that have been proven effective in person, modify the delivery channel, instead of in person it's now online or on a cell phone, and get results that are comparable but at a fraction of the cost as well as a, a much less uh, a challenge. So to me that's the future of technology where we will take programs that are, that are proven in person to be effective, perhaps continue to offer the in-person, because some people do want groups in person, are able to get to them, but to then also offer programs that are online uh, that gives them more scale and more reach. Thank you very much.